Uh, hi, my name is Charles Oduk Prince. Uh, so basically, I'm a tech entrepreneur, but most importantly, I have decided to integrate technology into solving the very common uh, SDG goal. Um, of course, that is ending uh, hunger, that is zero hunger. So what you're looking at right now is a way in which we are sensitizing everybody to produce food using the minimal resources, that is minimal land space used, minimal water, and then minimal also, uh, I mean, you don't even need to struggle. So basically what you're looking at is uh, systems of uh, various hydroponic models. So we have the towers, of course the, the towers are installed with the mapal troughs, um, and then we have the airframe there. Back on the other end, you can see there's the crate systems, and then here we have the strawberry uh, uh, pouches. So basically, the, the, the main goal here is maximizing the, the space you have to produce the, to have the maximum volume of harvest. Um, we are calculating approximately up to 20 times in harvest volumes as compared to open field farming. Uh, but then I think one, one most important thing to mention is uh, hydroponics is very sensitive. So uh, there are certain crops you can't practice here, of course, like uh, we, 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 we can't do maize with hydroponics. Uh, but majorly up to around 70% uh, of uh, consume consumable uh, are, are basically able to be done here. So I think basically as we walk around, you'll basically see that. Uh, so from, so we, we plant from a range of uh, crops, uh, starting with skuma wiki, that is the kels. We have the spinach there. We have some few things like uh, lettuce. Uh, we have uh, our basil. Where we are right now, this is an example of one of the hydroponic systems. So we call this the crate. Uh, the, the system itself is very water efficient. And like I mentioned, we use, up to, we use as little as only 5 to 10 percent of water as compared to open field farming. So uh, ideally, the whole greenhouse is sent, is, uh, we, are, we are looking at up to 95 percent automation. So that basically means that you literally be having almost zero work. Eventually, we have a smart farming gadget that is able to do this automatically. So I'm uh, just going to demonstrate how, what we mean when we say water is efficient with this system. So as you can see, what usually happens is the water flows by gravity and then it seeps into the first crate and then to the next and then to the next and the next and the next and it's collected down here. Of course, there's a sieve just to make sure that uh, on the collection tank we do not have uh, water that is, uh, is, you know, has some issues. So all that water again goes back to the main collection pipe, all the way down to the collection tank. So you can see the water is being controlled within an environment that is, you know, recycled kind of in a way that you do not lose uh, any of that water. You can see spinach is coming in quite really good there. Uh, this is uh, bell pepper. And then we have, of course, kumawiki, which is uh, the kels. And then we also have here, we have the, the, the bulb onions that are also coming in quite good. And you can also see these are actually tomatoes. And I repeat, this is only three weeks old. So you can see in the next, uh, I don't know, uh, in the next few, I, let me say some few days, we'll be ready to basically start the harvesting process. Uh, in between, I'm sandwiched between what is called the, the vertical towers. So basically, these are systems that uh, allow farmers to plant crops using uh, perforated holes within a pipe. The, this is the very conventional pipe. Um, it's pretty much easier to make. And as you can see, down here we have what we call the mapal troughs. So basically, what mapal troughs do is uh, more or less like uh, open field farming, but then now it's within a controlled environment. They are very good because uh, once water flows uh, within the... Uh, within the, the towers, they are collected on the mapals, and then of course they're recycled back to the tank, like the other system. So you can also see we have incorporated quite uh, some pesticide control, uh, or rather pest traps. And then, uh, like the other systems, these ones are also just simply uh, very much, pretty much straightforward. So what you do is you just open the water like that, and we should be expecting water coming, you know, basically on the, all the systems. And just like the other system, once water flows all the way down, it's, it goes back to the mapal traps, which again collects them. Uh, so you can, feel, you can feel the water draining all the way down.
And the same also goes for this. Uh, like I mentioned, this is again three weeks old uh, basil. This basil is ready for harvesting. And just like the same system, it's just a one-time thing. You open them like that. They flow from one to the next to the next, collected and recycled. Very efficient system. So what you're seeing behind me is what we call the pouches, the grow pouches. The good and most interesting this th uh, with this technology, like I mentioned earlier, what we do is vertical farming. So uh, behind me here is a 256 crops uh, pouch system. So the good thing with this, this is only four meters by one meter square. But within that four meters by one meter square, four by one meter square rather, we have over 256 uh, uh, crops. Uh, including strawberries, uh, we have lettuce, and then we also have basil, which are also ready for harvesting. Now, the good, the good thing with this system is that it's so efficient that we can literally install it in walls. So, uh, be it uh, urban farming, uh, gardening, this system is very efficient, and we do not only do it for commercials, we can also plant active, uh, I mean live plants. And just like the other systems, the irrigation is pretty much straightforward. So, what you do is, uh, once you open like that, uh, water should be flowing as we can see now. So the water flows from one pouch to the next all the way down and then it's collected down uh, by, the, by the collection pipe and then all the way recycled back to the main tank. And like I mentioned, this is also an hydroponic system that you do at, uh, quite, a, at quite a very huge scale. Uh, it can com accommodate quite a number of plants, including, uh, uh, of course, the herbs, uh, strawberries, um, and a few things here and there. But the good thing is, it's so water efficient that you basically, uh, the material that is used to make this is, perfor is, uh, is permeable. That means once water has uh, you know, accumulated in one area, it can go to the next to the next and then it's collected and recycled so and finally what we have here is called the airframe the airframe model is called the airframe because basically it's uh it's shaped like an a now with the airframe model we have two models uh or rather the airframe system we have two models so the first model is where there's a return is that there's a return so there's the the supply should be on this end and then the water should be collected on the other end but for specifically this reason we decided to do the flooding system what do I mean by flooding system? The flooding system works in such a way that once you irrigate, you just need to wait for the water to get utilized by the plants until, uh, until probably you do irrigation for the next time. So the good thing with this is you only need to probably even water once a week only. So we're practicing all these uh, models just to basically show that food can be produced vertically and landless. Uh, and like I mentioned, the, the area we are in is not taken to be so good with agriculture because it's black cotton and uh, it's really, really, really hot in here. Um, so right now I've just opened the, the watering system. So as you can see, the water is dripping. Uh, it's a drip irrigation kind of a model and it's pretty much straightforward. So like just basically just what we have just done right now, uh, we'll take this through... Um, uh, the, the, the watering that I've already done here should take the plants up to even one week without watering again. So again, as you can see with this one, we, are, we have strawberries, we have lettuce, we have spinach, we have kales, um, and a, bit, a little bit of, a, of a, a, a rosemary there. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, actually the, 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 the the lettuce are pretty much ready for harvesting. They're really looking healthy, as you can see. We have very healthy food and produced organically. I will mention it again. This is only three weeks old. So the smart uh, system about this whole thing, we have now studied how we can do smart farming using hydroponics. But then what if we can actually advance it further by introducing a technology? Where we are standing right now is the main supply tank. So as you can see, there is an outlet and then there is an inlet. So basically, water flows to the crops via gravity and then there's a collection tank uh, down at the, inside the greenhouse that pumps the water back up. But then, if you clearly look at this, we have an antenna here. This is not a radio antenna. This is a smart water level sensor. 
So what it does, it, it updates me in real time of the percentage of my water. So whether I'm in Nairobi, I'm in the US, I'm in South Africa, or I'm in Somali, I'm able to see the amount of water I have left within my greenhouse. With this kind of a system, it's also easy for me to, you know, basically understand which kind of crops uh, consume more water. So that, that is just one part of the innovation. There's another part that I'll show you in a bit. So uh, the second part of the technology is what we call the monitoring gadget, or rather what we title Mshamba Digital. Basically, this whole, whole, uh, this whole project is called the Mshamba Digital. So what, uh, what this gadget does, it, it captures data in real time. These are industrial grade uh, sensors. This is a TDS. This is a medium temperature sensor. In here we have a light, uh, uh, light intensity sensor. Uh, right here we have humidity uh, sensor. Uh, we have the pH sensor somewhere here. We also have the water level sensor. So all these are actually installed within uh, the greenhouse and then allows the farmer to have active data on their phone. So how does this work? This gadget captures real-time data using, of course, the sensors I've just shown you, and then it relays them back to our backend that is able to process this information and then send it to the customer using uh, an SMS or USSD short codes. So farmers, today you've seen that agriculture can be done in a space of not even one acre. This is not even one acre. This is like a room in itself. This is like two rooms at the most. You can see the innovation, the planning that has been put into it. You can try and implement this anywhere. Even if it's at home, even if it's on your shamba this is a game changer in agriculture for more information visit mshamba we'll put their contacts down in the bio and their information please like share comment and subscribe